Hola a todos, bienvenidos. Eh, si me pueden ver y escuchar claramente, les agradecería muchísimo si me lo pudieran poner en el chat. Eh, esto para saber que podemos comenzar con el webinar. Eh, ya veo que algunos de ustedes están escribiendo. Perfecto, muchísimas gracias, Alger. Gonzalo también veo, ya está. Ok, perfecto. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Eh, bueno, pues mi nombre es Carla Plasencia y en nombre de Student World les agradezco muchísimo que estén el día de hoy con nosotros en esta live session Estudiarte en Estados Unidos todo lo que necesitas saber. Eh, hoy tenemos una institución increíble. La verdad es que es una de mis favoritas y ahorita mismo van a saber ustedes el por qué. Eh, les voy a eh, contar súper rápido cómo va a funcionar esta live session. Bueno, pues um, de su lado derecho, como pueden ver, tienen su chat. Ahí si me pueden escribir ahorita desde dónde nos están viendo, estar increíble para poder um, hacer una presentación como más personalizada para ustedes, ¿verdad? Guatemala, Panamá, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Ecuador, Ecuador, Honduras. Perfecto, muchísimas gracias, muchísimas gracias a todos Perú, excelente, pues muchas gracias a todos por conectarse, eh, en la segunda pestañita de, esa, de ese mismo lado de su pantalla van a ver que tienen una cosita que dice preguntas, aquí nos pueden poner todas sus preguntas eh, durante la presentación, la presentación va a ser en inglés, sin embargo, si ustedes no se sienten tan seguros preguntando en inglés, nos pueden preguntar en español sin ningún problema y yo eh, los ayudo como traductora. Perfecto. Y por último, si las notificaciones llegan a ser un poco molestas para ustedes, le, las pueden mutear dando clic en la campanita que está en la parte de arriba, en la esquina superior derecha de su chat. Y pues bueno, sin más que decir, les presento a nuestras presentadores del día de hoy. Ellas son Trisha, que estará contestando todas sus preguntas backstage. Y Sue, ella nos va a dar la presentación. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for being here. And the stage is all yours. Ah, muchas gracias. Thank you, Carla. Um, my name is Sue Raleigh. I'm the executive vice president at the Academy of Art University. And um, We're going to tell you a little bit about the Academy of Art today and why we're different from other art schools you might be considering. So, Carla, if you take us to the next slide, please. So, first of all, San Francisco is a really beautiful city, one of the most beautiful in the United States. Um, that's the Golden Gate Bridge, and we do have fog. So, when you come to San Francisco, you want to make sure you always bring layers, jackets. Next slide, please. We also have a lot of hills, just like there's a cable car. Um, like I said, it's a wonderful place to study art and design because the visuals of San Francisco are magnificent. Next slide. This is kind of a map of downtown San Francisco. As you can see, all of those buildings are uh, art and design studios. Um, and why would I want to show you that? Well, that's your campus. A lot of our instructors come from these art and design studios. So by having the campus right in the middle of it all, you get an opportunity to meet these pros. You start networking while you're taking classes, and you have a lot of opportunities for employment. So all of those are important for most students, not just international. Next slide, please. We have accreditation. You may say, what is that? Um, it, it means that people in uh, government positions and at other schools have come and they've, they've looked at everything we're doing. They've audited uh, our classes. They've looked at our curriculum. And they say, we're doing a good job. We have regional accreditation, which is WASC. That's the accreditation that you probably are familiar with. Uh, a lot of the big schools also General colleges, university are accredited by WASC. We have NASAD, that's very important. It's a national accreditation that covers all areas of art and design. So we have a national group that have come and looked at what we're doing and said, given a, you know, they gave us the thumbs up. We have CETA and NAB for interiors and architecture. And then we have 
been approved by the California Commission on Teaching Credentialing. So if you want to teach, uh, you know that the state of California has approved um, your curriculum. Next slide, please. We have a lot of different degrees. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but we have 22 different schools of art and design. 22, that's a big number for art and design. And we have 122 accredited degrees and programs. So we have two-year programs. We have four-year programs. We have graduate level classes. Uh, and we have MFA classes, which is a, a terminal degree in the United States. And what that means is, if you get an MFA in any area of art and design, you're considered like a PhD in a lot of academic uh, classes. Next slide. We also have STEM. And for international, this is very important. Many of our degrees now uh, bring in a lot of computer technology. So we've been able to get those approved so that you can work for three years after graduation. And when you're working, you're getting paid. Uh, it's very important for a lot of students. They really want to have that on their resume. Next slide. I'm going to go through now, just show you some examples of student work. Uh, this is architecture, obviously. This is for people who want to create cities and communities. Next slide. Fashion, uh, we do our own designs, but we also do our own textile and um, printing. So we we have all kinds of equipment uh, if you're on site where you can actually create not just the design, but the textiles in which um, they are made, what they're made from. Next slide. Jewelry and metal arts. Some uh, schools might include Julia, jewelry and metal arts in fashion design, but we make it separate. So if you want to do necklaces, if you want to do fancy uh, pins, brooches, earrings, rings, or maybe you want to make iron gates for estates, I don't know what it might be, but you can learn to do all of that in this jewelry and metal arts program. Next slide. Photography, we don't just take pretty pictures. We try to make unusual images uh, so that people remember. This is about sugar, obviously, and it's really beautifully done. I think you would agree. You probably remember um, these images even after we've finished this webinar. Next slide. Advertising can be used to sell products, but it also can be used to make a point. In this picture. Uh, the student is an international student. She was concerned about the amount of plastic in the ocean, and she used an image uh, sort of like an iceberg uh, just to bring to your attention how much plastic is even beneath the surface of our oceans. Next slide. We have game development. So if you like to play games or you want to create a game, um, this is this is the the major for you. One of the things that I also want to point out is we have what's called eSports, which means that you can compete on a team playing a game with other students playing that same game at a different college. It's a new trend and it's very popular and you can be part of that at the Academy of Art. Next slide. We have visual development. Visual development is where you take characters, you create them, you figure out how they would walk, how they would talk, what they would wear. So you're really taking your imagination and creating a whole, a whole person. Next slide. We also, in visual development, do backgrounds. As you can see, um, the one image to the left is kind of an eerie foreboding background. And then we have two characters to the right, very different. Um, we can almost guess what they're like just by looking at them. And this is the kind of thing you do in visual development. Next slide. 
Animation and visual effects is a little more polished version of visual development. This is what you see when you go to the uh, theater or you're watching your, uh, your favorite channel um, and you're watching an animation full length. They have done 3D animation and visual effects. And we have the same equipment that the studios have. Uh, and we have people from those studios actually teaching animation. So um, yeah, it's a great way to get into that industry if you're interested in this particular field. Next, and, and you still have to know how to draw. I like to say, you know, uh, the computer doesn't do everything. You still have to understand the basics of drawing if you're going to be an animator. Next slide. We also have industrial design. Industrial design is where people create products that make life easier and maybe higher quality for people, whether it's buses uh, or tennis shoes. You're really looking at products, um, everything that touches almost a human being. How does it impact their life? That's what you uh, are working on. Those are the problems you're dealing with in industrial design. Next slide. But we also have a focus in industrial design on cars. Actually, car a car is a product. Uh, the man who is the director of industrial design is was a big, uh, well-known designer. Uh, Tom Matano is his name. He actually created the two seat two seater Miata, which is considered an iconic car. Uh, and what better way to get involved in this industry than to have a director who's known all over the world for their designs. If Tom would recommend you, I can guarantee you'll get a job. Next slide. Graphic design. You've all seen these every time you go to the grocery store, you see all those labels. A graphic designer has to come up with that. The idea being, how can they catch your eye? How can they make you want to buy this product? In this case, we're looking at organic fruits, uh, sun goods, and they've drawn beautiful pictures of the fruit when it's uh, ready to eat. And that may, you may say, I have to buy that particular jam or jelly. Um, and it's just the label that's attracted you. Anyway, it's a very, if you're detail oriented, um, and you like to work in, uh, in small spaces, but you like to have impact, this might be the major for you. Next slide. We have illustration, very popular. We do all kinds of illustration, whether it is editorial or children's book. Next slide, Carla. Or comics. Comics is also very popular. Uh, comic is basically a story a book, a narrative, and it's got a lot of illustrations. So if this is something that you like to do, if you'd like to take somebody's script and create images to go with it, illustration is your major. Next, ma next slide. We also have fine art painting. You all know what this is. This is what you see when you go to galleries, when you go into someone's home, they may have these kinds of images up on the wall. Um, beautiful work. And we're known all over the world for the quality of our students' paintings. Next slide. We also have sculpture. These are highly stylized sculptures, but you can do anything you want, whether you want to do the more traditional work or you want to go crazy and put together something like these images. Next slide. We also have interior architecture and design. Um, Interior architecture and design is where you're creating spaces for people to live, uh, where they will enjoy, where they'll be relaxed, um, where um, they want to come back. And whether it's a hotel or a restaurant or a home, that's what we do in interior architecture and design. Next slide. I, I especially like to look at this picture because, you know, here's a staircase going somewhere from somewhere. Big deal, no big deal. But this person decided to take this staircase and really make it beautiful. So they've actually added to the uh, quality of that experience being in that room by 
being an interior architect and making that staircase come to life. Next slide. So all of these majors come together at the end of the year. We have what's called a spring show. We showcase the best work we have at the school and people come from all over to look at the work. It's, it's a really big deal. But if you aren't in San Francisco, but your work is good enough, we will showcase the work and put it up on a, on a website where the employers can also look at that work and hire you. Um, and we're seeing that many employers now are hiring students from all over the world, not just the location in which their company works. So you could be working for a company in, I don't know, anywhere could be Pennsylvania, or you could be working for a company in California, or you could be working in tex from Texas, but you could still be living in, whether you're living in, in Mexico or Venezuela or wherever, whatever country you're from, you still could be working for that company if you know how to use the tools that we're going to teach you when you come to the Academy of Art. So anyway, these are some images of the spring show where the employers come just to look at student work and hire students on the spot. It's unbelievable, it's really exciting. Next slide. We get a lot of questions about rankings and we have some top rankings. Uh, we have, these are international rankings. Um, they have looked at schools all over and decided that the Academy of Art is ranked in, and as you can see in these cases, number one. Um, that's a big deal. And those are some of the reading, the reasons why when you're looking at art schools, you want to look at their wor world-class rankings. That's going to tell you a lot about the quality of the education. Next slide. These are companies that have worked with our students uh, in their classes. And it um, gives the student an idea of how, for example, I may be working for a car company in the class that I'm taking in industrial design. So say, for example, Maserati comes and says, uh, I, we have a problem. We want our uh, cars to appeal to a younger age group. How do we, what kind of design would be appealing? And so you would work together on teams to try to come up with a design. This is the kind of collaborative work that students who are still in school do at the Academy of Art. Next slide. But these networking opportunities, and that's what they are. Uh, you're, you're meeting with people in the industry, you're getting to know them, they're getting to know you, frequently lead to jobs and careers. So you can see um, that people are at Pixar, I think 15% of Pixar is from the Academy of Art, Walt Disney, uh, Tesla, Marvel Comics, all of these are companies that you've known and seen around, and we have Academy of Art University students working there. Next slide. These are some of our faculty. They're all award winners. Um, that first one is Tom Matano. He's the, the guy I told you created the Miata, uh, but all these people have uh, received recognition in their prospective industries. I'm um, looking there at Jana Memel down there on the second row. She's got three Academy Awards. So that's great. If you have people who have been successful, they can tell you what it takes for you to be successful. And that, that's why they're working at the Academy. They want to do that. So you're networking while you're in school. Next slide. We also have support if you need help with your language. I know for most of you, uh, English is not your first language, and um, if you need some help, we can we can provide that, and you don't have to wait to start your art classes. We have come up with a system so you can actually be taking your art classes while you're taking your language classes. Next slide. We have a lot of student clubs. Uh, you can join a club whether you're a remote learner or whether you're on site. All the majors have them. And I, I don't know, I think we have like right now 30 clubs or more uh, that you could join. And this is a great way to collaborate with your peers. We also have housing. Um, and 
sometimes you go to a city, it's hard to know where to go to live, and you might look at a less expensive neighborhood, but then you don't feel safe, or it may be, I could live here, I have a great place, but it takes me a long time to get to school. Our housing is right near our, our campus buildings, so you can live in housing, you can get on a shuttle bus, you can see outside the one dorm, there's a shuttle bus. It'll take you to class and bring you home if that's what you want. So, um, and we, we put this together because uh, students were just having a tough time getting to class on time. So we decided this would take care of that problem. But after you have a, been at the school for a while, if you decide you wanna move out on your own, that's fine. You're not locked in for the whole time you're at school. But they are some great buildings and in wonderful locations and the shuttle service, boy, that's that means a lot too. Next slide. How much does this all cost? So we've put an estimate here for full-time international students as undergrads. That means you're working on your bachelor degree. It's going to cost you per academic year, that's two semesters, $34,840. That includes your application fees, your activity fees, your health insurance, and other material costs that we think you might incur. Um, the other thing, if for graduates, it's a little bit more, 36,808. That is for, I believe, three semesters, um, but we know that you probably would only go two. And this includes, again, your application fees, your student activity fees, health insurance, all of that. So all schools have a cost. But the question is, what are you getting for the money that you're paying? And I'm, that's why I've tried to show you some of what we, what, why we feel uh, and why students come to us, because they really want to work in this area, art and design. Um, and I, can we go to the next slide, Carla? So we're going to show you um, some of the artwork. It's a, it's a short video, but I'm going to just give you an overview of everything that we, we can offer and what you can do if you decide to come to the Academy.
So we like to say congratulations because we know it takes a lot of courage to decide to pursue uh, education in art and design. And Carl, if you could go to the next slide. So what we say is defy the ordinary, create the extraordinary. And we think that most of our students, once they get to us, once they get to the Academy of Art in San Francisco, they love it and they found their artistic home. But you don't need to just take my word for it. Carla, if you go to the next uh, video, you'll, we'll, we have a few students, international students, who made comment about their experience at the Academy of Art brands that I could find and this popped up and I love how many facilities this campus had. Well, early on I was able to work on actual project that normally you would not be able to work on until you finish school and you start working in the studio. I worked in an ad agency back home for three years up to like hey I want an opportunity in America and San Francisco is the creative hub right so I wanted to come here. It's a great opportunity for people with or without background to come here and be in the environment and learn from professionals. You don't have to be perfect at it. You don't have to know anything about it, but you can learn it from it. I'm doing masters in UI UX design. Previously, I did my bachelor's in interior designing and I had no experience for UI UX. This is like a new thing for me. I'm having really new experiences and I can say all the experiences are positive. The facilities that, and the professors at Academy of Art are some of the best I've had. You're working with people who have won Oscars, people who have worked years in the industry and know it in and out and they're there to support you to get into whichever field you want. All the teachers I had, I really, really enjoy them. I receive a really, really useful advice. We love presenting our work that we worked so hard for the past 14 weeks. Every team member pulled through and then we created this cohesive, holistic approach. It's also a great opportunity to see how like real work environment works, especially with different environments, different designers coming in from different departments. It's an amazing way to get experience before you go to the world. The Academy of Arts is like a really good opportunity to meet new people and to create films and to go after your dreams living in a really cool city. Everyone cares about us in students and they are opening a lot of opportunities for us. The Academy allows us to express our potential as artists and they bring that out of us. I love people here. I love that it's an international place where you can find people from China, from America, from uh, other countries and you can have this mix of ideas. My love for advertising is increasing since I've got here and just the people I meet, different minds from different cultures and you, you realize that you're a tiny part of the world, you know, and that's exciting. I am one of those person that looking for different things. Whenever I'm searching about the new things to try, I find out that Oh my God, we do have that tool in the school, so it's really cool. If you look for the professional ideas in the design area, it's definitely the better place to go. It's one of the best art universities here in America. Typography, advertising, UX design. I will recommend any design students. I would recommend the Academy to innovate, especially in my reviews. I don't think there's any other school out in the world that really offer what the Academy offers. And um, that was not scripted. They, those are um, interviews that we just said, would you mind telling us what you like about the school and how you feel about being a student here? And that, that's what the students had to say. Carla, can we go to the last slide? So this is, it's very simple. How do you apply? You go to that link right there. Um, or you give that call um, to 274-2208. Someone will pick it up and we can call you back. You don't have to pay for the call, um, but we want to hear from you. And you, your admissions specialist, we have admissions specialists just for international students. They're going to help you. They're going to help you navigate everything. They're going to make sure that you, it's as easy as possible. We don't want you to give up on your dream just because it was too hard to apply. So we make it, um, we streamlined it. And um, I think that you'll find that your admissions specialist will be your best friend by the end of the process. So that's uh, the presentation. Carla, where do we go from here? Awesome, Sue. Thank you so, so much for all that information. I do have um, lots of questions here from the students. So um, the first one is, 
Um, I would like to know if you can help us to get the student visa. We will uh, do everything we can. We can't actually get it for you. You have to make an appointment with a U.S. Embassy, but we will help you with the paperwork, the I-20, everything that you need to show the people uh, at the embassies that you are serious about being a student. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, here, Mariana wants to know, do I need to have an art-related degree in order to pursue a graduate degree? That's a great question. Um, and the answer is no. We know a lot of students go to undergraduate school to satisfy their parents. Yeah. And now they're out of undergraduate school and they want to do something for themselves. So um, we will take you at whatever level you're at, even if you're a true beginner. I'm not going to say that the graduate level classes aren't accelerated. They are. You have to move quickly through the curriculum. But we have a lot of support services and we have many students who come to us from very different backgrounds, like accounting. And now all of a sudden they're going to be a fashion designer. So they're successful. So um, it can happen if you want it. That's amazing. Yeah, that I, I can totally relate to that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So here um, some students want to know if you offer any kind of scholarships or financial aid. We don't offer financial aid. Uh, part of the F-1 visa process is that you can show that you have enough money on account um, to support yourself while you're getting your education. Now, having said that, there's also uh, from time to time scholarships. Um, sometimes it's just for one or two semester. Sometimes it's longer than that if you maintain a certain GPA. So you would want to work with your admissions rep to find out what is available to me, for example, if you're thinking about coming in the fall. Um, I would say this, though, if you're, if you're wanting to get started and maybe you don't want to move to the United States right away, you can take these classes online. You can take one or two classes. You don't have to be a full-time student. And you can start to kind of get ready, see if you like it, um, and then come when you're ready. So you don't have to pay the living expenses um, and you can take one or two classes. You don't have to be a full time student if you're if you're working from your home country. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, here someone is asking um, if they are not sure about what they want to study. Like, do you have any courses that they can take before um, getting into the school or can they talk to someone to guide them? Yes, is a good, is a simple answer is yes. And so we know a lot of our students come, for example, someone may come and say, um, well, I think I want to do fashion design because that's what I, I always love fashion. But then after a couple semesters in fashion design, they say, um, you know, I really think what I really want to do is jewelry. Or maybe they say, I'd like to be in that product design area because I really, I love, I have this idea about a tennis shoe I'd really like to create. We can transfer your credits over. We can get you going in the area that you're most interested in. Most of our beginning classes are truly beginning classes. So we know that students change their mind sometimes once they really start doing the work. And we are flexible around that. So not a, not a problem. Come, we'll get you started with what we think, what you think you want to do. And then we'll, we'll, we'll watch and see how it goes for you. And if you love it, keep you in there. If not, we'll get, we'll find what really fits. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, for example, in my case, I switched majors three times <laughs> until I was like, okay, I think I'm done. I, I, I will just stay here. So that is amazing. I lost a lot of time and money. So yeah, this is great. Yeah. Awesome. So here Michelle is asking, um, what are some of the benefits of being an Academy of Art University student? And if you offer any kind of internships? 
we the the biggest benefit and I guess what I'd like to get across, if you don't remember anything else about the Academy of Art, just remember if you want to get a job, if you're serious about working in some field of art and design, you should come to the Academy. If you don't have to work or if you just want to take classes for fun, you can still come to the Academy, but we're going to, we're more focused on making sure you have a portfolio at the end and that you have a network of professionals so that you can get a job doing what you love to do. How about internships? We have internships happening all the time, summer, spring, fall, um, and usually your instructors. Bless you. Sorry. Your instructors are going to be looking at your work and, and you just tell them, I, I'd really like to get an internship working with your studio or your company. And, and that's how it happens. They'll say, yeah, come for the summer. We could have you work for us. Um, and, you know, you can see what it's like to work at a studio. Or maybe they'll say, if you want to uh, work for us, we can get you in um, and, and even pay you. So there's lots of opportunities for internships. That's a great opportunity for sure. Um, here's someone is asking about the, oh, I see why. Um, Trisha shared with us the pre-college art experience. So can you um, tell us a little bit more about it? So if any of you out there are still in high school, we have this thing called the pre-college art experience. You can take online classes for free and you can try them out. Taught, there's their, their beginning classes. We have our, our staff of people that we feel like work best with, with high school age students, secondary age students. Um, and they will kind of start to introduce you to these world, this world of art and design. So yes, if, you're, if you are in secondary school, high school, and you're thinking about this, sign up for our art experience. Um, I think they're still doing signups for spring and try it out. See what you think. You can't lose it. You just, you'll just have the experience of working with a pro and you'll see how you feel about it. It's a great way to try on the shoes before you buy them. Yeah, for sure. That is amazing. Um, here I have another question about how the online classes work. Is it the same as being on campus? Uh, what's no, the it's different. It's different from being on campus because you're working from home, number one. And number two, you do your work at whatever time works for you. So, for example, some people are early, early birds, we call them. Um, and they get up at six o'clock in the morning and that's when they feel the most energy. And that's when they, <laughs> I know it's not me either, but we, we do have people <laughs> like that. So they do, they want to do their classwork. They want to take their, their class early in the morning. They don't want to do it at night. Other people are what we call night owls like me. And I think Carla, and we want, we would be more likely to start working about eight o'clock at night. And work till midnight, you know, that would, that would be the time that we might feel uh, most energized and, and want to do art. So that's the great part of online is you can do your work and you can take your class whenever it works for you. Uh, when you're on site, you have to take the class at whatever time it's offered. So that class that I'm a night owl. I might have to take a class at eight o'clock in the morning, you know, and I have to get up early to get there. So it's more convenient online, uh, same curriculum, same instructors, but some people just really want to have that on-site experience um, sitting in a classroom at a specific time with their classmates. And so we offer both. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, uh, here someone is asking about the English proficiency test that they would need. What level of English do they need to attend? How does that work? So we don't require an ESL test or um, any of the traditional 
uh, language tests or Duolingo or whatever it is people are using. We just say that when you come, we will, we will give you a test if you come on site and we will uh, evaluate where you stand and decide what will work best for you um, so that you don't fall behind in your classes because of language. However, if you're online, it's really, um, you should talk to your, um, your admissions rep about maybe finding out where you fall, take, maybe take the Duolingo test. I think it's free or close to free. Um, and then submit those scores and they can tell you what would work best if you want to start your classes. But the online classes, because you can take them at whatever time you want, and you can take as much time as you want. If you wanted to try it without taking um, the English test, and you wanted to use trans, you know, apps that would help you translate stuff, you can do that. Um, we're not attached to that, just whatever works for the students. So if you're an online student, it's really, you're not required to take a ESL class, but you might want to just because it might make it easier for you. Of course. Awesome. That is great. Um, here, someone is asking if you have any type of incentives or anything like that for athletes. We do. We have actually, I didn't talk about this, but we have, um, we're, I think it's NC, NCAA level. There's three levels. We're at, at level two. We have uh, baseball. We have golf, we have tennis, we have basketball, um, soccer. So if you're, if you're uh, an athlete and you would like to see if we do have, offer some scholarships based on um, your ability as an athlete. So you, we also have track and field. I'm trying to remember all of the different areas. Um, so you should contact, again, your admissions rep and tell them you have a background in athletics. Maybe you're a great soccer player or maybe you play tennis or whatever it might be. Um, and they'll get you hooked up with the uh, athletic department and they can talk to you about what happens next. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Um here I have another question about how is the housing? Um, what does it include? How does it work? Okay, so we have this housing. Uh, San Francisco is a small city. By that I mean it's there's a lot of buildings and a small amount of space. Um, some of the neighborhoods are safer than other neighborhoods. So we decided when people are coming to San Francisco for the first time, whether they're coming from another state in the United States or they're coming from another country, um, we needed to be able to provide them a safe place to land. You know, we want you to come, we want you to feel like, oh, I'm in this building, there's security, um, there's a shuttle bus that will take me to my classes and bring me home. I'm around other academy students, I'm not feeling all isolated and by myself. Um, and we even put in some of our, our, our dorms uh, studio space where students could paint or sculpt or whatever, work on computers. And then we have, uh, we, so we have these dorms. They're usually two beds and a bath. Um, that's about the typical size of a, a dorm room in the, in, in the United States. But then you have meal plans. So you can, we have cafeterias where you can go and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we have um, activities that are offered. Clubs sometimes meet in the, in the dorms. And also we have a place called the Art Cafe, which is kind of a hangout for international, uh, international and domestic students who live in the dorms. So... We have options and that what that building you saw on the slide, that place even has a swimming pool. So if you wanna you know, live in, a, in housing where you have a, a shuttle service that takes you to and from your classes, where you have a meal plan so you don't have to worry about your food and you can go swimming. That's amazing. <laughs> that's the place. 
Yeah, I, I want to live there, to be honest. <laughs> it's a heated pool, too, Carla. Oh, my God. Look. No, I have to go. <laughs> Pools are like, oh, I just love to swim. This is why I told you guys, this is why this is one of my favorites, the schools like ever. It's so amazing. They have it all. We try to make sure our young artists and designers and our older artists and designers are well taken care of while they're at school. Um, we want them, like I said, not to get discouraged because they're lonely or because they don't feel safe. We want you to come and we want you to feel like you're part of a family. And now you're meeting artists and designers from all over the world. That's what we want you to focus on, not these other things that we can take care of initially. That's amazing. That's so, so cool. Uh, here, I have another question from Mariana, and she's asking, are clubs and extracurricular activities included in the tuition? Yes, those numbers I showed you included fees, um, ac student activity fees, as well as class fees. So, yes. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I have here... Another question that says, can I work while studying? As an international student, you have to be in classes full time for one year before you can start working. Now, we do have something that's called curricular practical training. That means you can work up to 20 hours a week while you're taking classes after you've completed one year. Awesome. But once you do that, if you start being a, taking curricular practical training every semester, when you get to the end, you won't be able to do your full-time practical training. So many of our students decide that they'll just wait. They'll do an internship, but they'll just wait till they graduate when they can be working full-time. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so it's totally up to what you prefer and what what works best for you right perfect um here i have another question about how to apply and the requirements there's not many requirements uh if you go to that how to apply slide that we had up a few minutes ago you just go find an admissions specialist that works with international you tell them what you've done, and they'll help you collect whatever it is you need uh, so that you can come to the school. We do, you do have to get that F-1 visa unless you're going to work from home. If you're going to work from home, you don't have to worry about the F-1 visa. You can still take your classes um, at whatever pace you feel comfortable. And then if you decide you want to come to the United States, we can do all the paperwork to get you there. Perfect. Um, how international is the school? How many like different um, countries do you have on campus? We have, I don't know what the number is this semester, but it's usually between 50 and 60 different countries are at, are at the school at any one time. So um, when you saw those people talking, they were all international. Um, mm -hmm. You saw them from Wales, from India, from China, from, I mean, they just, we, there are countries people are from that I didn't even know existed, you know, and that's, I mean, so we have big countries, like sometimes we get several students from Brazil. Another time we might get a student from Russia. We may get several students from the Caribbean, at different different countries in the Caribbean. So, uh, South America, Central America, Canada, um, we always have students from these places. Awesome, that is amazing. Um, here, I have another question about any tips for the application process, and if you make any kind of interviews during the process. Mostly, I think the most important thing is to really do it. I mean, when you decide to do it, work with an admissions rep. Don't try to do it on your own. Let them help you. 
And if they tell you, okay, say I'm 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 the student. I'm I want to come to the Academy of Art. I've decided this place looks like it's right for me. So Carla will pretend Carla is my admissions rep. So I would call Carla and say, I'm really serious about this. I really want to come to the academy. So Carla would start to, okay, well, tell me what you've done in the past. So I would then be telling her, well, I, I took some classes and I, I did pretty well and I'm good at, I did some animations for my friends. And so Carla would say, okay, send me that. Send me um, some images so I can see what you've done. And then she would talk to one of the department directors and say, when you look at this, do you think the student, where do you think, what do you think the student should take starting out? And then she would come back to me and say, Sue, this is what the director said. And so we would start to figure out what my, what my path would be, what my curriculum should be. And that's the process. Um, she would probably also talk to me about my language skills and my writing skills and get a sense of how comfortable I was with all that. Again, if I was going to be taking classes from home, I really wouldn't have to worry about that. But if I want to come to the United States, then I'm going to have to um, realize that all the classes are taught in English and I'm expected, if I'm on site, I'm expected to participate. So that makes it a little more difficult. Yeah, totally. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, is the class the same online? Yes. Okay. Same credits, same classes, same what we call learning outcomes. Um, so whether you are on site or online or you're, you're taking maybe a Zoom class with people, we call those hybrid classes. Some students are in the classroom, some are remote. Um, so it's the same, it's the same curriculum. And when we have the spring show, um, and the work is all up for the employers, they cannot tell the difference between a student who has worked from home or worked on site. They can't tell the difference. The work is the same. Awesome. I'm going to translate this one because they asked in Spanish. So, um, sí, eh, respecto a tu pregunta, Belén, el costo es igual en las clases online que en las clases presenciales. Esto es porque es exactamente eh, el mismo material que se te va a dar a ti que a, la, que a, que a los de presentante, este, que a los de presencial. También tienen una modalidad que es como que tú estás conectada virtual, pero está la clase como en vivo, mientras los de presencial también están ahí. Y pues la experiencia, de, o sea, lo que vas a sacar del aprendizaje es prácticamente igual. Inclusive eh, nos cuenta su que cuando eh, estás trabajando, muchas veces no pueden... Um, como ver la diferencia entre los que estudiaron presencial y los que estudiaron online. Entonces, la respuesta es que los costos son iguales. Y, Cintia, respecto a tu pregunta de las becas, si ¿sí hay becas, tendrías ahí, um, Trisha mandó en el chat el link. Y, sin embargo, tienes que tener en cuenta que los programas son en inglés. No se pide ningún examen um, como tal si se estudia online. Sin embargo, ellos te pueden ayudar con clases del idioma mientras estás estudiando. O sea, no tienes como que esperarte, sino que lo puedes hacer simultáneo. Perfect. Uh, uh, let me just translate this last one because we already talked about it and it's about uh, the accommodation. Okay. So, um, Ambar, sí, hay alojamiento. Eh, Academy of Art University cuenta con residencias y, e incluso las residencias eh, tienen un, un autobús que los lleva y los regresa a, a la escuela. También tienen um, un plan de comidas, si eso es lo que, lo que tú estás buscando. Y eh, la residencia tiene alberca y eso es algo que a mí me emociona mucho. Entonces, pues, espero que ustedes también. Y eh, las residencias creo que eso es aparte, eso es totalmente aparte. Lo que les compartimos anteriormente fueron los costos como de colegiatura. No sé si se diga así en sus países, pero bueno, por la escuela y por los programas. 
Perfect. Okay, so I guess that that are all my questions for now. I don't know, Sue, if you want to share anything else before we wrap it up. I just want to emphasize what I've said about jobs. Um, that's what makes us different. Some times you might go to an art school and they would just say, oh, you're so creative and great ideas. and But you don't have a portfolio at the end. You don't have anything that you could show a, a prospective employer. Nor do you have a network of pros because the people who have been teaching you have been at that school for years. They're full-time faculty. And um, they're basically teaching you uh, fundamentals of art and design, but they're not getting you to the point where you can compete in that marketplace. It's a very competitive marketplace. Yes. So I'm just saying, if you want, if you want to work, if you need to work, and you want to work doing something that you think you'd love to do, then we're the place for you. Um, so check us out. Come and talk to the admissions specialist. Get more information. If you're still in the high school, secondary school range, take one of the art experience classes. But don't just walk away before you've really checked us out because for so many students, I've heard the Academy of Art made all the difference. I would have never had this opportunity if it hadn't been for the Academy of Art. So don't, don't pass it up. Check us out. It's worth it. I, I think you'll be feel like it changed your life. Yeah, that's totally true. And I'm going to translate parts of this so everyone um, can be at the same page. Um, bueno, chicos, eh, lo que hace diferente a Academy of Art University es que ellos se enfocan en que ustedes realmente tengan una oportunidad en la industria. Ellos hacen que ustedes tengan un portafolio cuando se gradúen para que puedan mostrar su trabajo y... y tienen profesores que están trabajando dentro de la industria, que están vigentes y que son muy exitosos en sus ramos y pues obviamente ellos los van a ayudar a, a entrar a esta industria que es tan competida y, y para quitar ese mito de que los artistas no se mueren de hambre, ¿no? Que muchas veces es lo que escuchamos. Bueno, pues en Academy of Art University eso no aplica. Ellos se centran 100%, aparte de, de pues obviamente que ustedes Um, exploten su creatividad y su talento y perfeccionen sus habilidades que ustedes sepan cómo entrar a la industria y creo que esto es algo súper importante que deben de tener en cuenta al momento de escoger una universidad y, y pues los felicito mucho a todos por, por estar aquí y por tomar este paso tan importante y, y por ser tan valientes por perseguir sus sueños Um, thank you, Sue, so, so much for this live. It's always a pleasure to have you. And this school is so, so amazing. So I'm very excited um, for all the students here. Um, I hope, I really, really hope that they take this opportunity because it's amazing. And the Academy of Art University, as you said, it, it makes all the difference. And it, guys, please check it out. Go to their website, check their, their videos. And if you have doubts, please don't hesitate to reach out because I'm sure that they can help you clarify all the doubts that you may still have. So thank you so much, everyone, from be, for being here. Thank you so much, Sue and thank Trisha. You. Y muchas gracias a todos por acompañarnos, por regalarnos un poquito de su tarde y escucharnos. Este, esta live session fue grabada y la subiremos el día de mañana al canal de YouTube de The Student World para que puedan volver a verla y para que la puedan compartir con alguien que a lo mejor se beneficiaría mucho de esta oportunidad. Thank you, thank you everyone again and see you next time. Thank you, thank you all for being here.